All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. We've got a bit more three racing X reel this week. We're going to try and get the chassis rolling. Onwards, then, we're on to page 22, putting together the radio box. Now, I'm not really a big fan of having the radio all the way at the back of the chassis when all the other electronics are at the front, but it looks like a high quality enclosure, so we might as well have a quick look. The build wants six M3x10s, which are the last screws in bag six. Two zip ties, two of the rubber caps, or bubber heads. No, you didn't mishear me, I did say bubber, there's a typo for you. A rubber gasket, the lid, the base, and the antenna tube. Now, since I'm not going to actually use it, we won't bother with the bubber heads and the zip ties. Right, the gasket sits on the base, which has a lip around the edge. You would, of course, need to fit your receiver and ESC first, then bolt the lid on, being extremely careful not to damage the gasket. It would be easy to trap it with the screws, and be quite easy to have it sit so the sides don't actually seal anything. The antenna tube location is a bit of an odd one. They run it along the side of the box. It would be better than having it coiled up inside the box, but it would be running close and parallel to the metal chassis, which isn't ideal. The box itself mounts to the thin cross member with two of the screws. Once they're nipped up, it does feel very secure. The gasket would go in now, but I'm going to leave it out as I'm not planning on using the actual box. We will loosely fit the lid with the four screws though. It may seem a bit odd fitting the box and we're not actually going to use it, but I've got a couple of ideas for things to 3D print that's going to fit on the rear of the chassis, and it would be good to have some of them clear the box just in case someone wants to use the parts with the stock box. It's a real shame that the box is all the way at the back. The average cables don't reach by quite a bit. Now the kit does come with extensions of course, but there's all that empty space next to the gearbox. Now that would be a great spot. Okay, page 23, wheels and tyres. This one will be quick to show, but in reality takes a long time to do. So a fresh cup of tea is a good idea right about now. This one starts with opening bag seven. It only has parts for this page, so we're gonna be using pretty much everything inside. The tires and foams are already fitted to the wheels, which is nice. The tires feel okay, but the foams are rather stiff. A softer set might be a good idea. The wheels are 1.9, so it shouldn't be difficult to find some that will fit. The rings are plastic. Now again, it would have been nice to have some aluminium ones, but as long as they work, they'll do fine. We've also got four hubcaps to cover up the wheel nuts. The screws are gold, which is quite the statement. I did end up getting a bag of silver screws, however they were ever so slightly bigger. They were still M2 by 6, just as the manual states, but they would have split all the holes in the rings. I think then that the stock gold screws are just ever so slightly undersized. They do thread nicely into an M2 nut, but they're really quite loose. Also in with the screws are four M4 flange nuts, and interestingly they're not nylock. Instead they've got grippy teeth on the flange that are going to dig into the plastic wheel. I'm sure they're going to work fine, but a nice set of standard nylock wheel nuts might be a good idea all the same. First, we need to make sure the tyre bead is sitting nicely in the slot in the wheel. It needs to be even all the way round. Then we can pop a ring into position, lining up the holes with the holes in the wheel. And now we have the fun part. We need to install a set of screws, and right now it doesn't matter what order they go in, just make sure they're only just going in far enough to make contact with the ring. There should be a sizeable gap between the ring and the wheel. Next, we go from one side to the other, tightening each screw a little bit at a time. This will bring the ring down as evenly as possible. If you do overdo it, there's a good chance the tyre won't sit nicely on the wheel. And with the plastic rings, they will more than likely crack long before you get them all tight. This really is one of those times where there is no shortcut. When you've got one set done, there's just another seven to go for a total of 96 tiny screws. This is where the fresh cup of tea comes in. All that's left on page 23 is to fit the wheels to the chassis. There's nothing special here, they just offer up to the hexes and one of the flange nuts goes on. I suppose it would be worth checking that the brake discs are still running centrally in the calipers. If the hexes weren't seated all the way before, they will be after the wheels go on. Well, that's the rolling chassis plus a few bits, and it does look fairly tidy and feels nice and solid. I think we've still got some time to fill this week though, so let's keep going and see how close to getting the body on we can get. On to page 24 and bag 8. 
We've got some bumpers on the parts tree and some spacers. Some velcro circles along with the metal bits we'll glue into the body and the matching magnets. That just leaves the screws of which we will need two M3 by four grubs, two M3 by 14 grubs, two M3 by eight screws, four M3 by eight countersunk screws and a pair of silver body clips. From the bits left over from bag six, we need the two long body posts and the ball and sockets that mount to the top. First job on the page is to clip one of the body clips part way up the post. I think they're only using them as something to make it a bit easier to grip the post to screw them in. Next we need to partially install the long grub screw into the base of the posts. We want them to be around halfway in. It doesn't matter if you're a bit off, as long as there's five millimeters or so sticking out the bottom, they'll work just fine. The ball part of the widget that fits on the top of the post needs one of the short grub screws installing just a few turns in one of the holes on the side. This will end up clamping it to the post so they only need to be in far enough that they're not going to fall out. Now we can clip the ball into the socket so we can install one of the M3x8s. The two parts clip together with a little bit of pressure. The ball has flat sides and it lines up in the socket so you really can't get it the wrong way. The screw goes in through the lug on the socket to clamp the socket to the ball. For now we'll just tighten it just so it adds a little bit of friction. We'll tighten it a bit more when we're sure it's set to the right angle. On the top of the socket we'll need to fit two of the magnets using two of the countersunk screws. The magnets are really quite strong so they have a tendency to jump to strange positions. We need to tighten the screws just enough that we can't freely spin the magnets. There's no point in doing them up any tighter, it just risks stripping the threads. The rear posts get screwed into the top of the rear damper mounts, but we haven't got a hope of being able to thread them in. It's just possible we could use an M3 screw to form some threads to make it a bit easier, but better still is to use a proper tap. We just have to watch out for overshooting and damaging the tops of the dampers. You can just about see the bottom of the hole, so it's not a major problem. With the holes threaded, we can screw on the posts. The orientation doesn't really matter much, but the manual has the body clip holes running across the chassis, so we'll do the same just for neatness. On the top of the posts we can install the magnets. They just slide over the posts and the small grubs get tightened so they dig into the post. Now at this stage there's no point in really clamping them down as they're way too tall, so we're going to have to cut them down a bit when we fit the body. The front body mounts are really easy to install, they just use the two remaining countersunk screws to bolt the magnets directly to the top of the front damper mounts. And since we've got the tap handy, we might as well tap some threads. It doesn't take long and it really does make life easier when the screws are constantly getting pulled to one side by the magnets. And that's about it for page 24, but we will have a quick cheeky test of the magnets though. Yeah, that seems like it should be strong enough. Okay, page 25 next, and the front bumper. We need the four countersunk screws and countersunk washers left over from the bag eight screws bag. The two rectangular spacers with the two holes, the front bumper, and the brace from bag one we put to one side right at the beginning. Interestingly, they still call it a chassis frame rear brace, even though this one's going on the front. To assemble, we can slide the brace into the chassis between the frame rails. Then install the screws with the countersunk washers and the spacers. We only want to install them a turn or so, just enough to keep them in place. Then we can push the spacers in so they're right up against the chassis and slide the front bumper between the spacers and the countersunk washers. Hold it steady and nip up the screws. Nice and simple, but it does look pretty good. Page 26 next, and the rear bumper. But there's a problem. First the instructions don't actually show you how to mount it, but it's fairly clear that it mounts to the tabs on the back of the body, which leads to another problem. If I remove my old bumper, or what's left of it, we find one of the tabs is long gone and the other one's quite badly cracked. But I'm not sure about using the plastic bumper anyway, and besides, mounting the bumper to the body really doesn't seem like a great idea. It's going to be much better mounted to the chassis. I think we'll just test fit the body and see how far off it is. Just sat in place, it's clear the rear posts are indeed far too tall. It should be fun trying to get all that to fit. And well, that's it for this week then, and that's it for the manual too. From here on we'll be making it up as we go along, taking full advantage of the 3D printer to make mounts, parts and some scale bits.
should be fun. So, as always, thanks for watching. Like if you liked, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye, guys.